So, Andrew, you know how much I love to bake. I know. I do. It's I great. love to bake. <laughs> but when I'm baking par desserts, I really don't like using margarine because it's not the healthiest choice out there. Right. A hundred percent, it's not. And, you know, traditionally, margarine was created by a process which actually creates kind of like a fake food. And it created trans fats and also hydrogenated and partly hydrogenated fats. And those have been proven, proven to cause many, many health issues, including cardiovascular disease. Right. So when I was at Kosher Fest in November, I came across a groundbreaking new product. It's called Betterine. It's a 100% natural baking stick, so I can make baked goods without compromising on taste or texture. Betterine is based on pure coconut oil with no chemicals whatsoever and can be used anywhere you would use margarine or butter at a one-to-one ratio. I can still make all of my favorite recipes like brownies and pie crust using it and get fantastic results. It is also 100% vegan, GMO-free, lactose-free, and kosher. Visit Betterine.com for a store locator and follow them on Instagram at Betterine Baking Stick for new delicious recipes. Hello, and welcome to Let My People Eat, a podcast that provides satisfying talk about kosher nutrition. Here we clear through the clutter of nutrition speak, arm you with the clarity and confidence to eat, feel, and be your healthiest every day. I am Jill Sharfman, a board-certified holistic nutritionist living in Los Angeles. And I'm Dr. Andrea Moskowitz, a neuroscientist and psychiatrist in Los Angeles. I use my training and experience to integrate positive lifestyle changes into my patients' lives. Hey, Andrea. Hey, Jill. How's it going? It's going well. So here we are. It's the beginning of the new year. I know. And it's exciting. Are, it's exciting. Are you one of those people who make New Year's resolutions? Not so much. Yeah. And no, I, I, I make them, but I don't tend to keep them. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, and that's why I don't make yeah, them. Yeah, <laughs> which, is, which is a little bit stressful. Um, but we got a voicemail from someone uh, who's telling us about her New, new oh, okay. Year's resolution, and she seems to need some help. So okay. here we go. Let's hear this voicemail. Hi, Jill and Andrea. Even though it's not the Jewish New Year, I still get caught up in the excitement of making resolutions and changes. I've tried many diets over the years, but nothing has really stuck. I know you have talked about diets before on the podcast, but I need a weight loss program with accountability. Do you guys have any suggestions? Thanks a lot, Sarah. So, Andrew, we've talked a lot about diets on the podcast. Right, and we've talked about why not to do them. Right. And which diets, if you are going to do a diet, which one works? We've talked to intuitive eating coaches about should you even be on a diet, all that type of stuff. So, but people still, especially this time of the year, are very interested in finding a diet that they can stick to. Um, So what we've done is we've invited into the studio Alana Muelstein. Mm -hmm. Uh, Alana is a registered dietitian, nutritionist, wellness enthusiast, and educator. She has become one of the most sought-after weight loss experts and influencers around. Alana's own 100-pound weight loss transformation has given her the cutting edge in weight loss counseling and expertise she is known for. Alana proudly sits on the prestigious executive leadership team for the American Heart Association, and she leads the Brew and Health Improvement Program at UCLA. Alana also created the popular Beachbody Nutrition Program, the 2B Mindset, Based on her experience, advanced education, and hundreds of personal clients, over 200,000 participants have joined the program since its inception. That's a lot. That's a lot. It's almost 300,000. Yeah. Hi, Alana. How are you? Hi, Welcome. Alana. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Well, our pleasure. So um, so we want to talk to you about 2B Mindset and New Year's resolutions. And um, do you think your program is a good idea for Sarah? It's literally the only thing she can she should consider. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I'm biased in that I created it, but I don't know what I would have done without it. Uh, I, it's the best, most positive and effective approach to weight loss. So essentially what happened is um, I was 100 pounds overweight. I was which, more which, by the way, <laughs> Alana's in the studio with us. Alana right. is a tiny girl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so a hundred pounds. I must was have been carrying a lot, of... a lot of weight. And right. all that extra weight wasn't just physically holding me back, but it was actually emotionally holding me back. Uh I was sent to fat camp since I'm eight years old. Oh. My uh all my friends would go to these Jewish camps every summer and I would tell everyone I was going to a 
sports camp. <laughs> and um, I was forced to get weighed in and measured, take three nutrition classes from registered dietitians every week for nine weeks every summer. Mm -hmm. I'd lose about 35 pounds and I would just gain it all back and more every school year. Like right. by uh, Hanukkah, it was probably already back um, with the lakas and the donuts. And then it would just keep coming on. So I would go back to camp and it just oh. became this like horrible, vicious cycle. And I just kept getting larger and larger. I was wearing a size 20 um, at, you know, eighth, ninth grade. That's, Un all, that's unbelievable. Big. That's yeah. really. Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't even as popular to be able to shop in those clothes. And I would have bar mitzvahs and weddings and all these things. And there were no clothes for me to wear, right. especially that were youthful. And so my mother would take me to fabric stores and tailors and we would have to custom make my stuff. Thankfully, she did that for me. Uh, Olive Shalom. And that was kind of like my horrible stuck mindset. It's like, do whatever you got to do in these months so you can do whatever you want to do afterwards. And I was really stuck in it. I'm a volume eater. I like to eat a lot of food. So in camp, of course, it was really regimented and you got whatever you got. But I never got, I never really never dealt with it. And I think that's why people are so interested in diets because they feel it's such a loss of control. I think people crave diets because not necessarily even for weight loss. I think they're just feeling so manic and um, unresponsible and disorganized with the way they're eating and they're craving a sense of discipline and control. And so they do things like keto or paleo or juice cleanse and all these things to take the thought process out so they don't have to think and actually deal with the issues. The problem is the issues, the underbelly of it stays and then they go back into being human, not, you know, failing the diet, just natural tendencies happen. They're at a social event. The things look tempting. They're having a craving. And when they have a normal reaction as to eat it, then they beat themselves up, feel like a failure. And the whole vicious cycle happens right. all over again. Did, so. so when you were going through this journey, then did you do that emotional work? Did you ever? So that's, that's essentially, uh, well, at first, so I was morbidly obese. I was in weight loss camp. I was in morning stretch or something. I'll never forget. Like my turning point was pretty precise in my memory, uh -huh. but I was doing something like mountain climbers or something, just looking at my body, seeing all this weight just jiggle underneath me and realize, you know what, Alana, this is the body. Like I had all these fantasies and dreams and I would, you know, maneuver my roles around and pray that one day I would just wake up with this brand new opportunity to start over. And then I realized... It's just not going to work out that way. Like mm -hmm. you just, you're going to have to do this and you're going to have to do this right. And once you do it, you're never going to want to do it again. So I had to figure out a way to have a very simple yet sensible and sustainable approach to losing a lot of weight, but the, mm -hmm. I like to eat a lot of food. So I had to really get clever and, um, and I, and I did, and I created all these tools and then I wanted to make sure that it was working so well. I lost all this weight on my own through high school and, and so forth, not with exercise, not with any of these things. And everyone kept asking me, parents, my parents, you know, they wanted to know how I was doing it. And I realized if I'm going to be giving advice, I need to have the utmost credibility in nutrition. Sure. I became a registered dietitian, which was um, insanely difficult and challenging in a really wonderful way. But it was a step I had to do in order to, you know, be the best I could be at this. And I got my master's in nutrition. I was hired at UCLA. And um, really created this weight loss seminar for hundreds and hundreds um, of employees. I'm now on staff at UCLA years. Oh. And then my private clients are seeing so, mm -hmm. so much success. My UCLA um, participants are seeing so much success. I knew I had to scale it and give everyone this amazing opportunity that I was able to give people um, here in Los Angeles. So I partnered with Beachbody. They're the company behind P90X and Insanity billion dollar fitness company out of Santa Monica. And um, we turned it into this amazing program now. That's great. So um, Beachbody, they gave me access to your videos, which is what people oh. who become part of the To Be Mindset program get. So I've been watching those videos. Oh, excellent. And what's so interesting is somebody, myself, who has over 700 hours of nutrition education, I thought, you know, I'll turn on the videos of Alana. I'll have them in the background. I'll do other things because I'm sure everything she's going to tell me on these videos it's the stuff I already know. So I turned it on, but I found myself really captivated because they're not your basic, like you need this many grams of protein. You have to Ooh, partner with carbs. Yeah. It's what Alana actually does is she um, shows all different kinds of products and different kinds of fruits and vegetables. And she talks about how to prepare them. So it's a very, um, what's the word, accessible 
yes way right. to change your diet like when you go to the supermarket you can actually go say oh yeah alana showed me that in her video so for right. me who thought i knew everything i actually found myself really sitting and watching and paying attention and learning things from the video so that was yeah. that was really that was really thank you fun. yeah people yeah. say it's it's kind of like a nutrition course, rewiring what you thought, what not. Um, I'm not into, there's actually not one food you need to eat to survive or lose weight. And there's not one food you need to cut out to right. lose so weight. Right. So that's what I love about it is that no food is off limits. Nope. And I, I think that's so hard for people when they are dieting to stay away from things. And that eventually causes their downfall. And then they end up saying, well, I, I can't have potato chips or I can't have bagels and well, it's so and interesting so, sitting I with think, the neuroscientist yeah. because the studies, I mean, right. I, I've been saying this for literally 10 to 15 years now, but, and seeing it literally in application with my UCLA class and so forth. But I would love your perspective right. from um, being a brain expert. But if you say no bread, no bread, no bread, right. no bread. If that person says to me like, okay, I'm not really listening to you. Like my UCLA participants, I'm be like, I'm not really listening to you, but I'm like just here. <laughs> and I'd be like, okay. And they're like, I'm really doing this like no bread. I'm just not eating bread. And then I would meet with him one-on-one because I was also part of the experience. Right. And I would say, so what, what's going on? He'd be like, well, last night was really impossible. Like I went to this barbecue and I'd be like, okay, great. So what was there? And he was like, well, there were so many buns. So like, I stayed away from those and then there were potatoes and I stayed away from those and this, and I'd be like, so what was there? He's like, uh, uh, but then I, I kind of failed and, and, and I had some and, and, and I was like, but what was there? You know, right. what was there? And I was like, what veggies were there? Like, where are the veggies? Like, no, no, there were no veggies. I'm like, think hard, really think about the buffet table. It's like, yeah, there might've been a salad in the corner. Like, exactly. And that's why I have people focus on what you do want to be having. Like water first, veggies most. Right. right. Yeah. So. It, yeah. Free your brain. Right. Because there is that there is, that does happen is that the minute you say you can't have it, that's all you see. I'm not a rule follower. Like I, yes, it's, it's the same kind of thing, like sort of the opposite. Like I've done this with people. I said, okay, I'm going to give you this example. Whatever you do for the next 10 minutes, I don't want you to think about elephants. Don't <laughs> let the word come in your brain. Don't think about it. Don't visualize it. Just don't think about it. It's fine. You, you can do that, right? Because for the like the last two days, you haven't thought about elephants. Alana, I'm not. You, I'm looking at you. I, I could, I'm you're thinking about, about elephants, aren't I'm you? I'm thinking about how it was like my daughter's <laughs> three um, first three syllable word. Like yes, yes. So, Jill, you're thinking about I'm elephants. I'm thinking about elephants too, but you know, no and, and no one's thanking me for this. Right, right. So it's brilliant. Yeah. No, so it's kind of the same thing. You know, it it's sort of it's it, not sort of it. Don't think about bread. Just don't have bread. That's all the person's going to be focused it's so on. So painful and, what people put them. And you can through. you can do it with like a non food example, like well for for most of us hopefully right elephants, and that's the way the brain works. You're going to focus if you say. What's interesting don't, is the three of us focus. are all mo moms, right? Right. Yeah. And one of the best benefits of doing my program that I get, um, I literally, you know, I, like I said, I've over a million pounds lost with my program and staying off. And the most amazing thing is the feedback I get. Women are obviously like happier than ever. They're the weight they were, sure. you know, before they got married or, you know, after, you know, before they had kids or whatever it is, but, and they feel great physically, but the comments on the emotional change of it, of like, I feel like I'm a better mom. I've never felt more in control. I have more intimacy with my husband, like all these things. And if you think back about what we're saying is imagine you're trying to feed your kids right? And you're trying to feed your kids and you, there's, you know, challah on the table or there's, you know, some desserts and in your head, you're trying to talk to them about how their day was and you're trying all these things. But again, like think about how, that lingering elephant, right. you know, it just, it's so distracting and daunting and draining. And, um, that's the freedom with my weight loss program is you will drop it. Like you will lose all that weight, but you're going to drop the excuses. You're going to drop those comfort big clothes in your closet. That you keep turning to, you're going to drop the lies, the myths. The worry, right? right. And, okay. the, and the other thing too, the more you tell yourself you can't have it, so you might like what white knuckle it and not have it, and then when you do have it, you're gonna binge on it usually, right. because it's like because you made it such an all or nothing. Because that you, the person <laughs> makes it such an all or nothing. You give it some pro power proposition. Right. So the minute they have a, a morsel of it, in their head somewhere is, oh my gosh, I failed. I'm a failure. 
This is not working. The fact that we give an inanimate yeah. object like food that kind of power is crippling. Right. And that's yes. why people, you know, when they do diets, it's like the self esteem, even though you may lose weight. And I am a full believer that my to be mindset weight loss program is not the only way a person can lose yeah. weight. But I am a really strong believer that it's the only way people can keep their weight off. Right. Um, and I try to show sustainable, like before and afters, right. like before, after three years later, two years later. Right. So I will, yeah. actually was going to ask you about that, right. um, that long-term. this diet you find long term is something people can stick with because you are changing their, it's in the name, mindset. And there's also many habits that I instill within the program mm-hmm. that I want people to keep for life and that you can keep for life. Yeah. Like even yeah. just using, you know, my catchphrase, water first, veggies right. most. Like, so that's I wanna, a life thing. I want to move from elephants to the two bunnies. So yes. tell us about <laughs> the two bunnies. Okay. So, uh, the reason why it's called Two Bunnies is I was, um, like I said, I, I I was actually about 75 pounds down when I was a practicing registered dietitian, lecturing and leading weight loss seminars at UCLA and having tons of private clients in Beverly Hills. Um, but I was still 25 pounds heavier. I was in a happy range because I was finally in that healthy BMI I was always seeking, but um, I definitely wasn't at the goal with that I've always dreamt about. And... Um, I had my daughter and it was postpartum and I had to get activated back into weight loss mode because at that point I had uh, just maintained the 75 pound loss for a long time. And I was back in weight loss mode, but I was also exhausted because I was like (laughs) up with my daughter. So I'm telling a client, I'm like, listen, I have never felt more confident about my weight loss advice ever. Like I'm literally watching it work on me as I'm helping people, which I I didn't really have that experience uh, in advance because... I lost all my weight before I became a practitioner uh, for the most part, but kept it off. But um, I was tired and I was holding up like I was listing, just do these four things. Like if you do nothing else, if you listen to nothing else, I say, if you have nothing else, just drink water first. Like I promise just drink tons of water first, drink tons and tons and tons of water before you have your meals and throughout the day, eat veggies most. Like, you know, a lot of people listening are like, ick, I don't like veggies. I don't care if you're not veggies most, the veggies more, veggies some, like you got to bring them in. It's Honestly, there's no person who's just going to lose weight having, you know, protein and fat all day. You'll never keep your weight off until you start to lean into veggies in some way. It doesn't have to be every way. I like also what you had said that, um, you know, a lot of people say, well, just have vinegar on your salad, you know, we'll cut down on calories, but you say- Thousand Island. Yeah, right. You're like, nobody ever got fat from eating salads with dressing. A hundred percent. I want that on my tombstone. Like right. no one ever gained weight eating salad dressing. I think that's one of the most irresponsible things that uh, like quote unquote nutritionists go on talk shows and say. It just steers everyone away. Like, why would I even bother with the salad? Like, aren't those not good? For-? Anyway, right. so veggies most, however you want them. A little butter on green beans goes a long way in eating a lot of green beans. Um, And my other, you know, two points is use a scale. I'm a big fan of the scale. I embrace the scale. By the way, all of these four points, I have more research on for their sustainable and reputable Mm -hmm. effects than ever. I'm a big believer in the scale. That is the number one. That was the first thing I did to make sure I stopped gaining back my weight. Right. I, mean, I was going to ask you, I mean, a scale for your body weight, not a scale but, for the weight of your food. Oh, no, no. I've never yeah. used the food scale. They don't, okay. there's no portion measurement yeah, yeah, yeah. or anything. It's, but um, I know in your, um, you have a YouTube video where you talk about the scale and you explain why originally you started with weighing people once a week and what you, oh, yeah. yeah, you found I, that. I find, you know, Weight Watchers has some great aspects to it um, for sure. Not as good as my program, but it definitely did a good job up until now, I think for helping some people. I'll t- I can go on why I don't like a lot of the methods, um, but the the weekly scale I find to be one of the best things they did because it actually got people on the scale and not avoiding it, tucking it right. away, getting it like well, dusty and just gaining right. tons. Some of people weight. are triggered or afraid or right. The fir- the longer you don't go on it, I believe the more of a thing it becomes, mm-hmm. like the more fearful mm-hmm. it becomes because it becomes a thing. It but becomes you're a avoiding thing. again, you're like scared. we talked about, like you're Absolutely. avoiding. And I've never met anyone who gained a lot of weight, twenty pounds. 30 pounds over one to 10 years, who's like really going on the scale often, right? It's like anytime I speak to someone who's gained a lot of weight since high school, since childhood, whatever, it's when was the last time you went on the scale? I mean, I, I know it's not within the last six months. So um, I'm definitely a big believer in the scale in terms of more often than weekly. That's because you could be making healthy choices. You could be having the salad while your kids are having the fries and, and all these things. You go on the scale once a week, it can say that it stayed exactly the same. 
you've been meeting with a trainer, you've been doing X, Y, and Z, and now all of a sudden you're defeated. You're like, I've been making all these healthy choices. What's the point? It's just staying the same. And um, that's not true. It's because of all the, it could be that you actually lost three pounds Monday to Friday and you gained three pounds over Shabbos right. or the weekend. And so now it's netting zero and you have no information to work off of. You have, right. it's not inspiring and uh, it's, it, you don't have that information. So um, I'm a big believer in the scale. If you do my 2B Mindset program, I definitely explain how to use it effectively. But even for everyone listening now, if you're trying to lose weight, I always recommend at least Mondays and Fridays. You know, Monday, right. figure out what happened over the weekend. Friday, figure out what's going on during the week. That way you can at least, you know, get focus and hone in on where your trouble areas are and where you're excelling. Okay, so what's the fourth bunny? And by the way, the bunnies are when you hold up your two fingers oh. on each hand, they look like little bunnies. So that's <laughs> yeah, how Alana bunnies. remembers her four points. Okay, so right, what's, right. what's point number four? Um, the fourth point is tracking your food, food journaling. I mean, honestly, anyone who's calorie counted or done Weight Watchers, a lot of it has nothing to do with the calories or the points. There's a lot I could go into that and show you why that's not even an exact science in any way, shape, or form. But just writing down your food was actually the thing that made you most successful. That is tried and true over and over and again. And even if you're listening to this, you're not seeking weight loss, you're not motivated enough to do my two mindset program and so forth. If you're in your head a lot, you're feeling guilty that you're an overeater or that you just binged on something and you're so guilty and all these things, the number one tip I could give you is following a out of control eating episode or a point where you feel like you overate, just take out a piece of paper. I highly recommend it's my two B mindset tracker. Um that's like really designed beautifully um, and effectively, but literally the back of a receipt, the back of your kid's project, whatever it is, just write down all those foods because immediately that gets you out of your head onto paper. And I mean, psychologically, the benefits and how you change your viewpoints of those foods is is pretty dramatic. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I was going to add to that. Um, this was research from a number of years ago. So this was looking at people um, decreasing their smoking. So what they found was even if people weren't really committed to completely stopping, the minute they they put like a, a little sheet of paper in their pack of cigarettes and it had like the date and the time and they had to just put a hash mark and the time mm -hmm. when they smoked a cigarette, it decreased by 50%. Mm -hmm. They're smoking just to track it. Not even, mm -hmm. they weren't, they tell them don't even try to cut back. Just keep track of what you're just doing. So, you know. so yeah. just doing, just writing it down, there's something, and I think probably too, there's something if you're at a restaurant and they bring the bowl of uh, the thing of uh, bread or rolls or something to the table. If it doesn't look good, uh, people start eating. But if you're going to be writing it down, that may be enough to stop you yeah. from taking I could that, ex literally, that extra yeah. thing you don't really need. I can literally go work. on for probably like two hours on each of these so much deeper on, right, I'm sure. on the benefits, not only in not craving it in advance of it, not um, like changing your behaviors while having it, but also post the water, the veggies, um, scale, chocolate, each of them also long-term, the, the long-term benefits of all of them. It's so significant. Right. So the scale, it's like, you're yeah. not going to eat late at night when, or you're not going to be as tempted to eat late at night when you know you're going on the scale in the morning. Right. Right. But right. then also once you go on the scale in the morning, then it's like, oh, wow, that was really encouraging. You know, my hard work is paying off. Now I want to continue. I mean, it's before, during, after all of right. that. Right. It, they're all extremely right. effective. And, and I want to point out, this is not a quick weight loss oh, program. No. Oh, people that, lose yeah. a lot of weight in my program. Right. Some people lose 15 pounds that first but, month. and Right. But you're, you you say two pounds at a time. Like that's your, right. you know. I, yeah. I, I, I definitely don't want to um, underestimate though the effectiveness of the weight loss. I would say the best thing I, I could say um, based on evidence and research of people doing my program is in designing this program. Thankfully, I partnered with such a reputable um, company like Beachbody with amazing resources. And even before d knowing that my program, we didn't have a name, we didn't have a title, we didn't even know what it was going to look like, video-based, book, whatever. Um, they basically gave me like 60 people as a test group and they would be my private clients. And it was all on video and understood. And so Beachbody got to hear how I was counseling, what it is, and help me figure out what's the priority, what's the right. order, what's the design and everything. And um, what we saw is people literally lost just as much weight, if not even more weight, in month five than they did in month one. Uh -huh. And the average weight loss in my program is 
yeah, some people first month, like they lose five to 15 pounds, whatever it is. But what's unbelievable is unlike any other program, I think you literally, if you lose 10 pounds a month, you could lose 10 pounds a month every single month versus other weight loss programs. You can lose a lot of weight in the beginning. It's really easy, but then it gets harder with time to sustain. And mine's kind of like engineered the opposite, that it's actually a little harder in the beginning because you're changing your vocabulary, you're changing your words, you're changing your habits, you're figuring out new dishes, but it actually gets way easier with time. And that's why it's so sustainable. Got it. Um, So part of the program is a product called Shakeology. So it's not actually part of the program. Okay. So it's so, tell, me, tell me about Shakeology, yeah. um, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's not certified kosher right. either, so I just want people yeah, to Yeah, let know me that. talk about it. Okay. So for sure. So definitely you can get my program without ever drinking Shakeology, buying it, or so forth. Um, so I partner, it's actually interesting because I've had clients in the past, I mean, there's millions of people who drink Shakeology across the world. It is literally the best superfood nutrition shake there is. And I've had clients in the past tell me that they're having it. And I would look into it and I want to just be so skeptical and say, oh, this is complete like garbage. And then I look at it in the ingredients and I'm like, this is probably one of the best products you can put in your mouth. Uh, And that was then now having spoken at such great lengths with the research and development team, like these loads and loads of brilliant um, PhDs. And I mean, Darren, the creator, um, the superfood hunter, he's also the founder of Brook and Nuts. He's a brilliant man. Um, the The product is incredible. So what it is, is basically, it is it does have a protein powder in. There's a vegan one that uses quinoa protein and pea protein. And then there's a whey-based formula. It comes in chocolate and cafe latte and peppermint mocha in the winter and pumpkin and know, tons of different flavors. It's a smoothie shake, so you can mix it with a banana and almond milk, and it could be your consistent breakfast. Mm-hmm. But the cool thing is that it is loaded with these superfood ingredients that you would never eat on a daily basis. So it has, even way before it was trendy, I mean, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, it had reishi, astragalus, um, cordyceps, like all of these you know, unique mushrooms and fungi. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, I mean, it's like amazing. It has tons of probiotics that are alive in the bag. Oh. So they actually test every bag to make sure they're alive. Refrigerate the bag? I, I mean, I recommend people do once okay. you open it, but you definitely don't have to. Mm-hmm. But that's so unique. Like you see yeah. probiotic chocolates all over the place. There, there's nothing real alive, alive probiotics mm-hmm. in there. Um, mm-hmm. They have antioxidants, but from fruit that you we would never eat here in like Los Angeles or probably America. Right. Um, bilberry and goji. And right. I mean, there's like moringa powder. So there's loads and loads of these superfood ingredients. Now, the reason why it's not certified kosher yeah. is not necessarily because it's not kosher, especially the vegan one. It's literally fruits and vegetables that are in it. Um, but they are obsessed with quality assurance. So they actually reject more suppliers than they take on because they're also really interested, which they don't promote, but they're really interested that there's, um, it's like ethical harvesting in these Mm -hmm. African communities where they're getting, you know, rishi or, you know, or any of these amazing ingredients, matakai and whatever. So they need to make sure that the supplier has the utmost quality and tested and everything. And you can't do that and be kosher. Right, because then you need to have a rabbi literally in Brazil at the source of picking up these ingredients, watching the whole thing, and then all this and then at the same time, what if one of the suppliers for blueberry powder or whatever is it's organic or it's higher in antioxidants and quality, but they don't they haven't paid for the kosher symbol, so now they have to, you know, compromise on quality in order for and they're also constantly changing it and updating it for the best suppliers. So like if they were ethically sourced, but now they're into money, like they literally evaluating these things. So kosher is never going to happen for Shakeology Mm -hmm. just because there are so many ingredients and qualities. But a lot of uh, Jews, I know, um, definitely have like the vegan one or talk to a rabbi. Because it's clean. Um, How does exercise uh, factor into 2B mindset? So uh, my whole life, I've been exercising, like overweight, and whatever. Um, when I was very, very obese, I still was working out, like going on the treadmill or, you know, my parents got me a trainer and all these things. And it never ticked the needle. It never helped me lose weight in literally any way, shape or form. Sometimes it was even the opposite. Like, oh, I worked out. I deserve X, Y, and Z. So um, in all my weight loss, I have never seen exercise be the thing that changed. If I needed 
to break a plateau. Like I lost the first 20 pounds and now I need to figure out how to lose the next 20. It was never exercising more, not even once. Even if I tried that, no change. The second I made nutrition nutrition adjustments or adjustments to my food and my eating behaviors, yeah. boom, it would fall off. So at a very uh, young age, I'd say probably in you know, like my higher teens or early 20s, I realized like eating is everything and exercise is extra credit. I've been saying it forever. But on the flip side, now as a mom especially, I don't want to say this and have anyone judge me, but if you are in it, you would know it. I don't think it's possible to be such a happy mom without exercising. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. I say that yeah. to my clients okay. and they nod so hard. Right. Yeah. Listen, I work for a yeah. fitness company. Right. I am Beachbody's first nutrition oh. only oh. program. Okay. They do not love that I say that, um, that food is everything and exercise extra credit. They literally have the best selling, like biggest fitness programs. I love exercise. And I, again, yeah. I think even if you think you're a happy mom, when you're in a, a consistent work routine, you will find yourself happier. Um, it's the 100%. number one thing for mental health. Yeah. Um, but, you know, with physical, there are definitely physical benefits. The mental, the mental benefits I find to be a bigger driver, I know for me, because for me, let's say I am maintaining, you know, my weight. Like, you know, once you do my program, maintaining your weight is really easy. Before I had my daughter and even after my daughter, if I'm at a, if I'm in the size I like and I'm at the weight I want, I, I know I have amazing physical health just because I'm drinking so much water and eating veggies and protein and stuff like that. I wasn't really, my immune system was still fine. My energy was still good. I wasn't really motivated to work out. The second I flip the switch and realize it's for my mental health, like it makes me hold not want to even hold grudges. Like I don't even, I can't even hold anger. Right. You get it all out and, right. and it makes me energetic. It makes me confident. So there's no jealousy or, and they're like all of these things that people like are in their heads of and, and all of it. Once I realized how much it made me a better mom, a better person, like more clear, more calm, more focused, all these things right. is it was a much more driver for me to be consistent with my working right. out. Right. And that also makes it easier for you to stay on your eating program. Yep. Because yeah. if you're happy, you're not using food to comfort, to, to comfort you or, to, so or improve aspects. your or improve your energy level or, or you know other things that you can use the exercise. I for. see exercise crush cravings. If you think of exercise and you think of eating gummy bears late at night after you put your kids to sleep, they check off so many of the same boxes. Right. A lot of it is like that time for yourself. A lot of it is that aspect of reward. A lot of it is um, the adventure and the seeking it. Um, it's it both slow down your. Um, breathing patterns. When you eat, you actually force yourself to breathe deeper. Um, they both feel like a release. They both feel like a sense of accomplishment when you are done with them. You know, it, it's, it, there's so many psychological aspects that when you do exercise, I do think there's so many benefits. People do my program though and lose literally have a few people who've lost over a hundred pounds sure. and never exercise. And then they want to. So they get off the weight and then it's honestly like being very overweight. It's not that fun no. to exercise when you're right. very overweight and everything's bouncing and shaking and you I don't know. look anything like the instructor, you know, <laughs> but when you actually get it off, then when you learn to work out for fun and then you actually see the benefits and then you see it can boost your metabolism and push you through plateaus and then you start to see, you know, the definition. Like when I was 100 oh, yeah. pounds overweight, I could do bicep curls and crunches for years. I wouldn't see a cut or a line. Right, right. So, no. Yeah, and yeah. exercise and exercise can make you hungry too. So you know that you Absolutely. have to balance that out. Um, coaching is also part of the To Be Mindset oh, right. program as an option. And I wanted to let you know that I just started this week working with one of the To Be Mindset coaches because I knew I was going to see you. I wanted, you know, I love being a guinea pig, <laughs> so <laughs> I wanted to try your program firsthand um, and kind of see what it was all about. I'm working with Coach Lily. Um, so there's actually, there's a, over 5,000 certified to be mindset, uh, mentors yeah. and there's over 300,000 or 400,000 beach body coaches. So I, uh, I really yeah. hope everyone listening has an amazing coach experience. Yeah. I, she is amazing. Great. Um, if anybody wants to get in touch with her, she's at Lily Aronin, L I L Y A R O N I N. You can find her on Instagram and Facebook, but um, we, you know, we've been talking in her energy and the oh, way good. she approaches things and the ideas. Again, I'm coming at this from a perspective of somebody 
who feels like they should know everything. And after talking to Coach Lily, I like I'm learning new things. And oh she's you're making me so happy to hear that. <laughs> no, she's really she's great. really great, and and you know she's she's with the program, and she just so you know the Good. coaching is an optional part. I'm of so that. thankful for but, to partner with Beachbody because yeah. they have that coach network of people who really love to help other right. people, right. and you know it, there's. There's just so many benefits of that one-on-one accountability and right. support. And yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, having a good beach body coach, you actually get one automatically when yeah. you sign up and mm-hmm. then it's your option if you want it, you know, embrace it or not. Right. So I would say, um, you know, do it because having somebody totally. to hold your hand, walk you through it, have the enthusiasm, have the accountability where somebody is going to be looking at your tracker mm-hmm. and trying to figure out why did did you lose weight this week why did you gain oh, weight this week yeah Yay, she's she's really great so um yeah Good. so if if anybody here is interested in so uh, happy to hear that in signing up and and doing alana's program to be mindset um you know i would definitely encourage the coach yeah reach part. out to lily sign up yeah and get reach it out through to her lily. i'll sure. post uh i'll post a link to her information on the website too and uh, and, and that was random right that was random. Yeah, cool. we've been Instagram friends for a while, and um, she and I have been talking, and we've been saying, what can we do? And then I said, well, Alana's coming in. Let us let me do, I'll do TB Mindset. Oh, amazing. And then we're going to talk about it and, uh, you know, cool. see how it goes. So, yeah, so it's it's exciting, you know, for me. Like I said, I, I'll try anything. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd like, I'm very, uh, very impressed with her so far. And I'm very so, excited to announce yeah. um, we just launched um 2020 the mindset membership it's a um because i think this whole conversation started with someone wanting that um continuity and ongoing yeah. account bit accountability and there's also the program is literally everything you need to lose weight effectively and i have video on traveling and um, i talk about a two-day trip versus a week-long trip and um events and parties and i talk about a two-hour event and then a long wedding and all these things so i really tried to be a, and when you stress it like we really tried to make a video understanding by experimenting with people like exactly what would be needed but at the same time there's a timely aspect to losing weight right like in December, it would have been really helpful if I was able to really just hone in on Hanukkah and Christmas parties and get really specific with the sugar cookies and the latkes and then the sour cream. So, which is obviously not in this, in the program itself. And um, that's why we launched this mindset membership and it's amazing. And it's now part of the program. So if you've never signed up with the program, you like automatically go in and have that first month and experience. And there's that aspect of community support so everyone has this now like amazing facebook community where i could do timely like just you know yeah. when it really matters q a sessions analyzing people's trackers and um That's great relevant okay, topics great. and i'll put a link to that um on the website as well so i want to thank alana thank you for so coming much for in. coming in um you great. can find alana on instagram facebook twitter pinterest uh on her website alana com. that's i-l-a-n-a M U H L S T E I N. Um, so go check all of that out. You can also follow me on Instagram at Jill Sharfman. I want to thank our engineer today, Mike Cassantini at the Network Studios. And thanks, Alana. This thank is you, like, I, you know, I'm very excited about it um, because I, I see it's a lot of. There's a lot of good things here that are helpful, and uh, uh, it's yeah. only positive. You're, there's right. no, there's no things that you're going to be like questioning. Everything is a healthy habit that is a good thing to bring into your life yes. i hope yeah 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 all right sounds good well thank you thank, thank you. you and that is it for this episode of let my people eat please visit our website at letmypeopleeat.com and leave us a comment get in touch with our email at podcast at letmypeopleeat.com or call us at 317-659-0004 post on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook with the hashtag Let My People Eat Podcast. If you like this show, please make sure to leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Tell your friends and family and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. And please remember that although we are certified professionals, this is not a medical advice podcast. No content, posts, or comments should be interpreted as professional guidance. Always speak to your own health practitioner about making the right life changes for you. Until next time, I am Jill Sharfman. And I'm Andrea Moskowitz. Thanks for joining us. And go in good health.